in the background of the presentation. So what other kinds of sponsors do you have? We have a sponsorship with the hotel Leo Grand, which is the biggest company, the biggest hotel in Chisinau, and is very business related. We also have a sponsorship with your partner, by the way, Om, or maybe the company Rusnak with the brand Om, who gives us water okay. for the coffee breaks and for the whole activities. But it's like, is the hotel okay with break? deliveries of kebabs to your event but that hotel is um, only accommodating the participants only sleep there the main activities are the my institution of studies the academy of economical studies the main activities are there and the university i spoke with the dean he is totally okay with this so I really would like to, I, I really can't give you money because it would mean like a different bureaucratic process for me. What I can give you maybe is more food. Uh, and I'd really like to stick to the original deal. So maybe I'll give you two kebabs and the third one for free. And I might throw in some Iran if you're really nice. So if I really like the presentation, you're like, I'd like to see a media plan yes. for the next two months maybe. I'd like to see how exactly you plan on promoting my company. If the media plan is okay, I'll give you maybe some Iran as well next to the kebabs. Do you think? Is it like we'll do this? How long is your event? Like three days maybe? Yes, it's a three day event. So I'll give you like for two days. I'll give you food for two days. Because I can imagine you'll be participants will be arriving and leaving in the first and third day, right? So you don't need that window, that many kebabs. This is a very, uh, this is a very good option. This is a very good proposition from your perspective, and we, to, I representing my team, are very grateful. But I am sure that you could give us not only kebabs but a full menu for all participants to cut, like to make the lunches of them. I sell kebab in Lakhmachun. I cannot give you more than kebab well, in Lakhmachun. Okay. Also, you sell fried. Uh, potatoes and you sell you've got a various meals which you can give it to us so sure, sure but I can't like I have to give you something that is very easy for me to give you everything else is much more complicated like providing you with menus and delivery so I can give you a wrapped kebab for free for every second kebab or third kebab you buy right this is what I can offer you, you can either accept it or not As I told you, we are very grateful, but uh, we will have to think about that. I will have my assistant to send you all my me our media plan, the information that you require. Okay. And um, in the end, uh, we will send you the proposition, what we would like, uh, maybe additionally, maybe not, on from our behalf and we would be really looking forward to your answer so we can expect the media plan you can expect the media plan till this evening considering that now it's 1 pm i think that at 8 pm you will get it i'm curious if i will but okay so then i think that's kind of it unless you want to ask me anything else let's i'm sorry for cutting it short but i have like another meeting in five minutes so if we have five minutes, I would really like to ask you how do you think what do you think about Real Madrid's yesterday play? I don't really watch football. I'm no. not a football person. I'm really not a football person in real life as well. But you think like Aren't you? Probably they're great football players, I don't care. Oh really? Aren't you? Okay. Then I would really suggest you to watch your social media presence because it seems that your account has been hacked. And I'm sorry to tell you this. Okay. Awesome. I will ask my assistant to check it out. Anyway, so thank you for today. Uh, it's been a great meeting. And I hope to see you soon. Yes, thank you. So I promise that you will get this media plan till 8 p.m. Okay. And we'll be expecting... When can we be expecting for the answer? In a couple of days. Thank you so much. Have a great time. You too. Thank you again. Yes, thank you. Woo! Sit. <laughs> no. Like, you you go first. I, I work here. You work here? Yes. Go. We're still continuing the simulation? No. <laughs> okay. So what do you guys think? Um, she was not prepared for the meeting. <laughs>
<laughs> he was all prepared for the meeting, okay. Why? Um, he didn't know what um, she could offer and what she wants. Good. So we could offer me some media plan, but that's only one thing we can really offer me. So, what can you offer? And we've talked about this on Tuesday, right? <laughs> What I did like is that he was perseverant in a manner that was borderly, bordering, like, how do you say that, cheekiness. But it was, like, almost okay. I wouldn't insist that much, though, if I were you. I mean, especially when the guy already, already makes a proposition, you know, like, hey, we'll give you this. That was really fast, you know. To be a dollar company, all they can give you is food. They would never give you money. <laughs> Unless they're like McDonald's. McDonald's can give you money because McDonald's has a corporate budget. But like the dollar duro you guys who sell kebabs, they will give you kebabs because that's why you go talk to them. You don't talk to them for money. And this is like setting expectations, right? What are your own expectations from the sponsorship? So you had like the first three phrases of our conversation in which you could have decided what kind of company I was. It, but then you refused to decide this, so I decided that I was a kebab company. You have to adapt faster than you all, than you did. But it was it, that's why I made the proposition, so you can see the kind of deal you might be asking for when you go to someone like a kebab company. If you're a really really big event, you can actually you can negotiate for free. For example, maybe pay for one or not pay at all for like fifty kebabs. Because fifty kebabs isn't much, right? It saves you like 200 euros in Romania, maybe, but so it's but it's really cheap, okay? So it's not hard for me to make 50 kebabs when I make a thousand kebabs a day. Giving you 50 kebabs won't really push me, pull me back, or push me back with my finances. But you have to set expectations. You have to set expectations for yourself initially. So why are you going there? What are you asking for? This is super important. So you're going to a meeting with a company, you've researched on this company, you see what it invests for, and you know you need that, that like maybe you need 5,000 euros for the whole event. And you go in with a plan, and you say, hey, from this guy, I want to get 2,000 euros. And you never start from 1,000 euros. You start from like maybe 3,000 euros. But you have to work with the person, especially if they're showing you kindness. If you break the point in which they start showing you, okay, I'm interested, I want to talk to you, don't take more than you can, than you can have, you know? So try and be a little bit more gentle when you push in the conversation. Any other feedbacks on this? It's been a long conversation. It's been like 10 minutes, right? I think. Mm -hmm.
What do you think? Okay, a couple of small psychological things. Like okay, in the beginning especially. Do take always either tea, coffee, or water. So you always something. Tea. You always take something. Always take. First of all, you have a bit more time to study the person when, when you go into the inside. Inside. Second of all, uh, during the meeting, you will always have some some moments where you need to think about things. But at the same time, an awkward silence is just. Hmm. It's not that persuasive. It's, yeah, so it's you easier to take a sip of the coffee. Take a sip of the coffee, drink it, and say okay, and go from there. Okay. And second thing, don't let the person know that. Like, yeah, it's good that you researched the company, but the, 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 right now, right now, it's company. like uh, you said, like uh, we researched you, yeah. and people might be on the social media and everything is up there, but people still don't really understand the social media that much yet and they're sometimes kind of freaked out yeah. the moment where there's it's like you researched me well, okay. you know what i liked it's like try to cope the feel more about like insisting like you know i like this and which might be something that you know that that person is actually so for example it's like he's very right okay so you research extensively if you can, but you don't let the person yeah. know you, you. You integrate the information you get in the conversation, right? So, uh, for example, you start talking about football and you might have seen that I like football. Okay? Even if my account was hacked, it was creepy. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> but maybe you see I like football and you like football and maybe you come to the meeting wearing a pin with the football team or something and maybe I'll notice, hey, it's an interesting pin, where is it from, okay? And you have, a, you have common ground. Or maybe you sort of suggest that you've seen this awesome movie or you've been to the match or you're going somewhere or there's just a huge event. What you could say, for example, is that your event is being hosted next to the football stadium, okay? So you're creating some common ground. But don't let the person know that you like research there because that's creepy. Uh, always, uh, usually, I want to make the meeting. There's uh, like two ways I want to do it. Either a, like which I don't like to do that much, is go to a neutral place, which is usually a restaurant, and then also pay for. The, but that that's another kind of meeting. But that's second, kind of meeting. second of all, which is usually in their office. Why? Like first, when I first walk into. I can study the room. I study the room and see loads of stuff. If, if it's his office, I can see either pictures of this, I can see the objects family. of that, the family, etc. Yeah, like and you have loads kids. of talking points in that room, actually. And you can you, you need to study the room a lot. Like, look at what is there, what can I use to my advantage. Like, maybe he has... In fact, you walk into someone's room, and there's on this wall, there are a lot of diplomas, like, the company has the certificate for, company has been awarded with, uh, he has been awarded with the best time, so, and he goes to walk around and say, hey, it's your company, it seems to be really good at doing this, you know, because a person who has company certificates in the room is really proud of what the company is doing, is really proud of his job, and is happy to work there, so you can talk about the company more, or if you see pictures of the family on, on the table, you might suggest that, uh, you know, an interesting way to go in is like, I have two kids of my own and they're really like time consuming and all that. I don't know, make, ask for some experience sharing or stuff. Okay, you don't have kids, but you might have kids in third years. Or brothers. Business, so. Or maybe siblings. Yeah, it's harder to start a sibling conversation than it is to have start a kid conversation. No, I mean, I may have like a brother and a sister, the age of his ones. But that's, that's, that's a very weird conversation. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's a very weird conversation. <laughs> I think in Romania, if when you're like 30, you maybe have kids, and you see, like, you talk to someone who's like 40 and has kids, pictures of your kids, you can actually say, ah, oh, yes, I see you have kids, like, maybe they grow up strong and powerful and stuff like that, and it's a good conversation. So, and maybe they start talking about their kids. But there's a more interesting perspective on this, and it's not such a direct approach, is that you can, like, talk about family values. So you can integrate family values into the conversation without specifically talking about their kids. And you can see like the people being united, people being together, like raising stuff, society, you know, family values. 
Can you, can you follow this point? Is it clear for you? So you can use this in a conversation and you can deduce from the fact that he has a lot of pictures with his kids that family is important to him. So you associate your event with the idea of family. And that's how you convince, like, you convince the person you're talking to. But this is like meta. <laughs> this is like meta discussion. And we still have to move on. So this is like, this was the meeting. Are there other points you'd like to make specifically? I like the way you shook my hand. It was a strong handshake and you looked me in the eye, which is great. But once you say bye once, it's goodbye. So people want you out when they say, when they get up, the meeting's over. As long as they're down, the meeting continues. Okay. So to have another five minutes is, was interesting, but maybe not that interesting. Mm. And never hack their account. Ever. Ever hack their account. <laughs> so you're saying your account's been hacked and the whole conversation you, we just had went out the window from my mind. Like, gone. Because it's been hacked. Fuck. Alright. If you want to say anything, is there anything left you'd like to mention? <laughs> Maybe I missed it in the beginning, but it, did you introduce like what you were initially coming from? Okay. But like, that was in the email, I don't know whether that's no, right. No, it, was, it wasn't either in the email, either in the email. I mean, either well, I mean, just because it. it's in the email, you say, Hi, my name is Mihai, I come from the... No, 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 it wasn't in the email. Kishino Union Debate Society something. And we're here to, I'm uh, really lovely to meet you, thank you. Thank you. But ask you to take a seat, maybe after your drink. And say, hi, why are you here? And you start talking. And then they say, hey, how can I help you? And sometimes they ask you, how much money do you need and why do you need it? And then they say, why should I give you money? And people are, can be very blunt or just very pervasive. Okay. So the last point in this whole wonderful discussion is key account management. And we've covered this mostly in our last seminar. Right? So, first thing you must understand when you set up a meeting is that if they postpone, you always accept. So, if they can't do it, like, they, they, they have to put the meeting forward. You can try putting the meeting forward after they say yes, if they ask you to suggest some meeting date. But if they say yes, they will come up with meeting date, they might postpone. If they postpone, you say, then you have, like, maybe some room to negotiate a day or some hour. But don't move it for the next week. Do it as fast as possible. Uh, and very important is always follow up on your promises. So you've promised a media plan. I expect it, expect it in my inbox at 8 o'clock tonight. I do expect it so you can send it. Uh, and then what you want to do is keep them in the loop, right? So in, keep them in the loop. This means you might be having this conversation two or three weeks before the event. Provide them with the necessary information. Like the event is going to be on the 15th to the 18th of July in that venue. It would be really great if you'd like to, if you could come, right? And after you sign this partnership, maybe you'll send them another email before the event a couple of days. Say, hey, the event is about to start in a couple of days. Uh, could you make, can you make it or can you not make it? It's really great to have you there, so on and so forth. If they don't come, or even if they do come, afterwards you might want to send an email and say, hey, the event happened, this is what it looked like, here are some pictures maybe, uh, this is where your, your logo was, and uh, you will be following up with an event report, like a presentation. What we do in Aspire is provide our sponsorships with a report after the event, saying, okay, this is the budget, this is what cost it, this is how many people were affected, and so on and so forth. So and I always keep them informed that you always like thank them and say, hey, thank you for your help, thank you for... And then you start sending like cards, right? You start sending Christmas cards. And you might send them fruit baskets. And you might send them flowers for... Like what we did this year was we sent them a Christmas basket with a bottle of wine and maybe some biscuits and stuff. Like, hey, from our organization, thank you for all your support. Because when an organization gives you 12,000 euros, you can afford spending like 100 or 200 also Christmas baskets to keep the person that has decided to sponsor you engaged with your organization. This is very important. It's always the same person, the one that decides. If you have multiple people in the organization with your project, you send this to all these people. Okay? 
So for example, I've had uh, I had a market in junior, okay, who moved up to the marketing responsible and then moved up to the head of marketing. And what happens in big corporations, this is like a big corporation structure, what happens in big corporations is that your project will be assigned to a marketing junior who will read like maybe 50 projects or 50 propositions. And then he'll select out of those proposition proposals maybe like 10 or 5 or, or 1. And he'll say, I really like this one, let's try doing this one. And you're going to have the first meeting maybe with this person, right? And what happens is that that person, you have to really conquer this person. This person has to be your ally, has to be your flag bearer. Because it's going to go up to the marketing responsible, like his first in command, right? Up the ladder. And say, hey, this is a very interesting project. And this guy has to decide maybe between ten projects. Out of one, one, of, which, one of which is yours. Okay? And after he decides that he'll be doing yours, and uh, this person, the, the first person is mainly responsible for keeping everything engaged and fighting for their project. Because if, if they, their project gets selected, and it's a successful project, they'll be promoted. So basically you want this person to fight for you, and they will fight for you. But then this guy has to take this one project up to the head of marketing, which will have five projects to choose from, maybe sponsor one, maybe sponsor all five, and say, why are we doing this? Is this like in line with our company values? Is this okay for us? And so on and so forth. So what we did was we sent baskets to all three, we sent Christmas cards and Easter cards to all three, and 